Hello there, Durka here, and welcome back to World of Worship Legends on the Series X. Today, we are in one of the new Soviet cruisers that are currently in early access, the Tier 5 Gorky. It is essentially a Molotov. What else does it have to offer? Let's find out. So, the Gorky was the lead ship of its class, and in the same class of ship as the Molotov, of which we are pretty familiar with here in Legends, as it has been here for the better part of a year. As cruisers go, it is armed with a rather large caliber gun at the tier, setting it aside from the Bujani with its 152mm guns. The Kirov and the Gorky have 180mm guns, that can be absolutely devastating to any cruiser that will show you the side of their ship. Right now, these ships are in early access, meaning you can only get them from the Soviet crates in the store or what will come from the Element of Choice campaign. After about 15 crates, I received two out of three of the cruisers, the Tier 4 and here the Tier 5 Gorky. Before we go any further though, let's take a look at our commander. We are using little Nikki Kuznetsov with Adrian Mimbelli and Cassius Yamamoto. While I'm still kind of experimenting with what I like, I chose kind of a middle of the ground setup between movement and damage. There are always two trains of thoughts when it comes to cruiser setups. Usually on one side we have people who enjoy doing DPM setups, where you focus on gun reload, accuracy, and simply damage output. And then there's the other side where people like to have agile setups, where you have a super maneuverable cruiser that floats around avoiding all incoming shells. Well, that's clearly not a good choice with this ship, but it is so clumsy I just wanted some perks to help it to be able to get out of its own way. Full DPM could work, and I've gone that route in the past for ships similar to this one like the Shapayev, but the longer I play this game, the more I enjoy having ships that are a little more maneuverable. So, to help with the reload, I am using Mimbelli and Reload Station, because the reload's pretty long, and when you're faced with threats like enemy destroyers who are often spotted for only a short time, as we'll see here shortly, Having a little faster reload will help you eliminate them. The guns are excellent at long range, which is right up Nikki's alley, as he helps this thing shoot around 17 kilometers, which is pretty fantastic for a tier 5 ship. Keep that in mind when we talk about how to play her. Gorky is definitely a glass cannon, having very powerful main guns, but not much in the way of armor. The shell velocity is insane, and you will notice it is really easy to zing shells across the map with nice flat firing trajectories. Health points for Gorky are middle of the pack with the other tier 5 cruisers, but let's take a note just how bad the torpedoes are. They have very short range, 3.9 kilometers, making them probably the worst torpedoes out of any cruiser in the game. They're not fast and they don't do a lot of, a lot of damage. They're going to be most useful in oh, code brown situations where then more than likely you are going to die. Maneuverability like we talked about. It maneuvers like an Iowa without a rudder. The turning circle is a lot. A lot of meters. <laughs> 860 to be exact and the rudder shift is equally as bad. Both of these together means you're one of the least maneuverable cruisers at the tier. Although straight line's top speed is very good at around 39 knots. When comparing it to its sister ship, the Budyani, I think the Budyani is going to take the cake and be the better cruiser, if only for the radar that Budyani gets, which is how my division mate and I, Capper, were able to hunt down and get rid of this Fabuki. If it were just me with the sonar, chances are he would have gotten away um, maybe i could catch him in a straight line since this ship is pretty fast like we mentioned but bajani i think is is the better of the two if anything just for the radar so the concealment on gorky sucks <laughs> it 
it's also the worst of the tiers so don't plan on making any sneaky plays in this thing or doing any stealth firing as soon as you pull the trigger you can be spotted from nearly across the map so how have i been playing her well given the maneuverability extremely long range guns and the good uh, shell trajectories i've been trying to stay more long range staying out of harm's way especially in the early parts of the match and looking for any cruiser dumb enough to show me their broadside in the right situations uh, these shells can absolutely decimate broadside ships and not just cruisers Battleships that don't respect you can be shown the error of their ways, especially if they are more lightly armored ships such as a Mutsu. Now, a Mutsu is one of the more lightly armored battleships, but let's peep the damage on this next AP salvo that we send towards this guy. Shell selection is definitely going to be huge on this ship. If you're not comfortable with it, playing this ship will kind of help you figure out how best to do that. Yeah, 8,000 damage at 11 kilometers on a broadside battleship, not bad at all. So yes, making sure you have the correct shells loaded. Um, a well-angled battleship uh, will probably bounce most everything you dish out, so at those times you probably have to switch back to HE. My fire chance here on this setup was 13%, but you can boost it up to 18% by taking burn it down and igniter this could help your odds in dealing damage to well angled enemies and it wouldn't hurt to experiment with this a little bit if you're struggling to get damage overall i would say that this is a higher skill cap ship where good players can have a lot of success with smart positioning good armor angling and playing the long game but one screw up can have you back in the port pretty darn fast. It's just not forgiving. There are no long range torps or mid range torps for people who are pushing you. No get out of jail free cards, no smoke, no radar, just you sonar, um, a catapult fighter. It's, it's not necessarily the easiest ship to play. Newer players definitely I think are going to struggle with it, but it could also be a good ship to learn and to kind of cut your teeth on figuring out the best shell type to use, um, looking for broadside targets, and also teaching you lessons in armor angling and not getting yourself lit up. There was a game last night, I believe, in the old Gorky where I made a mistake and uh, definitely got dev struck. <laughs> Just wasn't able to turn quickly enough and one salvo from a New Mexico with only half the guns was enough to send this thing to the bottom. At this point in the game, we have taken our cap on the other side where we spawned at sea cap. One of the battleships is still heading around the islands. Oh, good lord. And uh, we'll get some opportunities to show off this AP on the Grash Bay. Who isn't as heavily armored as some might think? A lot of people think that it's pretty tanky and you can go up against battleships and stuff with it, but it really... The armor isn't that robust at tier 5. It does have a pretty big HP pool. That was a poorly aimed shot, but let's see how the next one would do. A helpful thing to note when using the AP on Gorky or Molotov, or really any other ship for that matter, is whether or not your shells are actually penetrating your enemy's armor. So every time you shoot a shell, there are some little symbols that pop up on the right of your screen. The first one, penetration. The second one, shatter, overpin, or bounce. So in that shot, we saw that we have five pins, one shatter, and whatever the last one was, I think an overpin. So when you're shooting armor-piercing rounds, like on this New York, just kind of testing out, and I, I think I was aiming for his superstructure here, or since he's a tier four, I was just seeing what kind of damage I could get. You see there we had one shatter, three pins in the superstructure and one bounce. So you're kind of just going to have to play it by ear to see what these 180 millimeter guns can get through. At least that's how I choose to play because I don't have every ship in the game's armor scheme <laughs> memorized. So the Fuso here, again, we're kind of testing out at 13 kilometers. I just want to see how many shells I can get through his armor belt or his deck. Five shatters and two bounces. So not very effective. We're gonna try again here, see what we can get. 
or shatters. Okay, obviously I'm being very stubborn. No, there we go. I, I switched to HE. If you're getting salvos like that and they're just not being effective at all, then just go ahead and switch to HE and hopefully you can start setting some fires. Apparently the Fuso is more well armored than I would have thought. But I do, I'm, I'm trying to focus on him because the New York is just not a threat. If you guys remember playing your way through the American Battleship line, uh, the New York couldn't hit the broadside of the barn, so I'm not respecting him at all. At this point in the game, I think it's funny to note that I haven't taken a single hit point of damage. Um, and this thing is such an easy target, but I guess I've just been lucky. So to kind of recap, not the easiest ship to play at all. Oh good, there's the battleship coming around the uh, the far side of the islands there. Making it into the game, perfect. Anyways, not the easiest ship to play, but maybe it would be worth it. Sticking around for the grind in this thing will lead us to the Riga, which is going to be the tier seven tech tree ship at the top of this line. Apparently Riga is supposed to be pretty good from what I understand on the PC. Although it's going to be similar to this, similar to this playstyle. Long range guns, not very concealed, not very maneuverable, very clumsy. But what Riga will have that this won't have is tankiness. The Riga is supposed to be well armored and um, resilient. I'm maybe picturing a, a small Stalingrad, just a little bit less of a Stalingrad, which I have a video on the Stalingrad hopefully coming up pretty soon. I just wanted to get past these newer ships. So this game is pretty well wrapped up. We're going to farm this Bayern down. The Bayern at tier 5 is a very heavily armored German battleship, so the AP is probably not going to do a lot. We'll test it when we get totally broadside with him. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy this ship and that you can get some of these uh, Russian cruisers from early access. I'm very much looking forward to the Riga at the top of this tier, and so I will continue to grind my way up here. Leave a comment down below if you have gotten any of these ships from early access, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for any future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Alright, see ya.